Harbor Metals has a project on the western coast of Newfoundland. It's actually west of the town of Cornerbrook, almost on the Atlantic Ocean. And it's an old copper project, that people, a copper and zinc project, that people worked on more than 100 years ago. And so in those days, they were mining extremely high-grade copper and they'd put it in barrels and then ship it to London, England. And subsequent to that, uh, the project's kind of been forgotten and no one's really gone back and done a, a good job of doing new exploration methods to try to trace the, the mineralization. So we think we've got a project, there's no doubt there's copper there, there's zinc there, uh, some silver there, and we think that there's some tonnage and grade that we have already have outlined and we think we can expand on it by doing some more modern techniques. The drilling that we announced the other day is actually some of the first part of our phase three drill program. And so we're getting all of those assays back now and we'll have those to release to the public over the next few weeks. At the same time, uh, we've done a significant financing. We're well funded to go into a more significant drill program and as well carry on with the geophysical surveys that we're doing. So we're in great shape and we'll have lots of news going forward. Well, I think there are a couple of things that, that have led to us surviving the market a little better than some other companies. One being the quality of the project and the second being that this is a well-structured company and we've got a, a strong shareholder base that includes people like Eric Sprott and, uh, and some people who really believe in the project. So the, the relative uh, float in the company is actually relatively small and, and so we're in good shape that way. And we think with some new news we can actually uh, vault to the next level. Well, I think that's always what you try to do is structure your board and your management team to work together. Uh, and we have a, a good solid guy from Newfoundland. We've got uh, a good solid geologist as our QP. He's been involved in a number of projects that have, uh, you know, where resource estimates have been done and they've been advanced. Uh, myself, I've been in the industry for probably 45 years now and I've got a long track record of Finding projects that I think people have overlooked or that it was timing was wrong or they just didn't do the right thing on, the, on this particular project. So in a case like this, I think by uh, utilizing our technical team and, and being well funded and having strong shareholders, we can really make something out of this project. Well, with my history and having been involved in projects like Hemlo, I was involved in two of the three projects in the, in the Hemlo area where we found 20 million ounces of gold literally sitting under the Trans-Canada Highway. And having seen the share price of uh, companies like Goliath and Golden Scepter go from 15 cents to the, the, the equivalent of $100 after all the takeovers were done, I think that's really where shareholders uh, do the best if you've got a good project and if you've got a good team evaluating it. So I think uh, in base metals and in gold, those are the, the sectors that you want to be involved in. And then I think you really want to be in those, try to identify those special projects where there really is lots of upside still in them. And I think. You know, from a commodity perspective, I think nickel and copper are probably two of the really strong areas that, uh, that people should be in. You know, if you're thinking about greening the economy, those are probably two of the elements that I think have limited supply going forward. There's just really not a lot of uh, new supplies of nickel or copper that are going to come on at, at any kind of uh, low price. And so we're going to need higher prices for those commodities for these projects to move forward. Well, I think investors should understand that one of the primary focuses of a company should be, you know, what is the jurisdiction you're in, uh, what are the roadblocks that you're going to run into, and, you know, what are you going to try to do with the project at the end of the day. So really, a lot of it comes down to, and I've done this over 40 years now, what are the logistics, what are the political jurisdictions and problems you're going to run into, and what, what are you going to do with your project if you find something that's not 100 million tons or a 10 million ton high-grade deposit, what are you going to do with it? And so in the case of York Harbor, uh, this is a project that's got a highway running through the property, it's got a power line through the project, there's a town right there, uh, drilling costs are reasonable, and there's a port there. So everything is there, and we know that the mineralization is strong and was processed historically. So the only thing now is to determine what the size is and how, how much more we can find using new geophysical techniques. So we're using a technique called uh, induced polarization which finds non-conductive mineralization. And I think that's where people have maybe missed the boat on this project historically, is they haven't done the right technique to find this style of mineralization. So we're hard at that right now. And so we've got potential to come up with all kinds of uh, new areas of yeah, mineralization.